In particular, it's true that uh, the issues of women in ophthalmology are very important, and there are many female heroes out there in our field. You just mentioned mm -hmm. that in India, there are also now opportunities yes. as well. Yes. Uh, can you speak to that, how things are changing in India? Okay, I think more than 60 to 70 percent of the key ophthalmic positions, all the ophthalmologists are led by women. Well, it's very, I think, I feel honorable, you know, that it's honorable for you to say, I don't really, you know, have the ambition to become department chair. But isn't there something else besides that? But I think across the board, it is very clear that women are underrepresented in any leadership roles in ophthalmology. So less than 10% of people in leadership roles were female. How can women make a change to uh, come into more leadership roles in the field? I think it's difficult. I think it's a cultural thing. It's a society. It's not something that an individual or even just a group of people can really change. So in, in the world, it seems like the issue of time can be uh, much more challenging for a woman ophthalmologist than a man. Yeah, additionally, I think the responsibility of looking after children uh, often falls a little bit more heavy on the women. So from that day onwards, if I just close my eye, I became blind. When I open the eye, I can see everything. Mm. Race is also an important issue when it comes to the work. How do you compare one's ethnicity to being a woman in things that impact the workplace environment? If you're a minority in a group that's a majority, you will have a different um, place in, in that group and, and, and have a different voice. There are no department heads. What's happening there? It's called the leaky pipeline. How can, how can men be supportive of what women are doing in the field? So I, I think what I would say is when we think about women in ophthalmology or for that matter women empowerment what you say I think the critical thing is that all of us including women we should be able to act freely. Mm. I think that's the most important thing rather than stereotyping. I don't think there's a lot of um, gender discrimination honestly. I, I think the main problem is a lot of us are not putting ourselves forward for promotion. That's fascinating, you know what? Mm. Because women, the femininity brings it a very important aesthetics, grace, empathy, and you know, uh, a natural intuitive power to the system which is important. We can't only talk on sales economics because your society would crumble. You know, men often are able to achieve more than, than women for certain reasons related to maybe aggressiveness during negotiation or whatever it is. There's something going on there, it seems. And you know, perhaps finally, Lipika, if you could speak to a little bit about your life in ophthalmology. What were some of the seminal moments that mm -hmm. sort of made you who you are today in ophthalmology? I was getting the comments like, you cannot understand business because you are a medical. You cannot do this because you're a woman. Just hold back. You know, what is this? What extra you have, which I don't have? Just an MBA, a three-letter word. Somewhere there are lots of people, lots of uh, female ophthalmologists starting training, but somehow they do not rise to the top. That's very interesting. Hopefully, women in ophthalmology all around the world, but also in this part of the world, will also speak up for their right. Uh, female ophthalmologists who are just sort of coming into practice now may have a leg up on male ophthalmologists. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so in Hong Kong we always have rumors of often say ophthalmology centers like to take pretty girls to attend to with the further training and so on and so forth. We know that diverse organizations perform better and workplaces are happier. Having a range of ideas and proper representation of everybody is better for them. It I am judge. I am being judged because at the top there are still again there are men who are judging us. Women value perhaps balance mm. more than men do. Children are often involved. That that's a necessity, therefore, to to achieve a balance. That men, in some ways, maybe don't necessarily value as much because they don't necessarily have to achieve that balance. You know. It's true. I went to my professor. Will you please recommend me for? Training, he told me, being a woman, is it possible for you? So systems that are designed by men for men and medical training a hundred years ago was male dominated, so the whole system is, is you know, geared for men. Do you think that, are there ways to, to put yourself forward as a woman, somehow rise to those department heads at some point? Hmm. 
also tension free Mm. Unless you are not tension free that your kid or your family is being taken care of, you cannot give in your 100%. I think the recognition that diversity is important and then working out ways of achieving that is, is the way to go. And the first thing is to recognize the importance of The advantage of being a pretty girl. If this is what's advancing careers in Hong Kong, is there any concern that stereotypes that are essentially allowing things to progress? Give your biased opinion, please. <laughs> I'm the single fellow ophthalmologist to women in the country. And the around, only one? Only one. My only goodness. one, no other. Can you speak to some of those challenges of, of women in ophthalmology? Women do tend to do quite well academically, so that on their CVs they, they look good. So yeah. what you are talking and me are talking is just a tip of the iceberg now. Largely a gender issue, but it's not just a gender issue. Now, you know, to, to ask maybe a more controversial question, is there a glass ceiling in ophthalmology? It's also related to how much one is willing to invest in the career. Why is it that I always have to prove myself as a woman rather than the other way around? If you're a woman, be a woman. Why do I have to be like a man to be successful? Sure. And she, was, she asked me, so how many um, head of departments are, are female in Hong Kong right at this moment? Right. And there are none. Oh. Currently in popular culture, there's this pound Me Too movement has taken aim at sexual aggression. Do you think that there are certain movements around the world like this that have to do with gender equality that also helps to set ophthalmology on a new level in terms of equality itself? That is a very sensitive issue at the moment. Now, our industry in ophthalmology is much more I would say it's, it's, it has a level of professionalism that other industries do not. But do you think that there are certain movements around the world like this that have to do with gender equality that also helps to, to um, you know, set ophthalmology on a new level in terms of equality itself? That is a very sensitive issue at the moment. Fascinating. If, you have, if you're married with children, then your primary, res primary responsibility is with the family. And uh, you know, you look so elegant here today. I imagine, I mean, to me, this is a statement. At long last, with all of your effort, uh, you've finally become the vice president of the APAO. I, I just can't imagine that. Women talk less and deliver more. <laughs>